In Webb's North's response to the Stanford challenge, he mentions that inference is prone to error. This is correct, and it's also correct for the big brother of inference, namely statistical reasoning. When doing statistical analysis, you only get a measure of how your current data has affected the plausibility of an inferred assumption. That measure should, however, not lead us too far astray. If we infer something and statistical reasoning supports that assumption to a large degree, and the assumption turns out to be false, that can be seen as a failure of statistical inference. However, if the measure only supports the inferred assumption weakly, that's no biggie. Typically, if we search for inferred assumptions, we should not have to search long to find such examples. So, uh, WebSnarf mentions one example in this video, namely the Fermat numbers. Fermat found a sequence of numbers based on a formula, uh, and it contained, as far as he could calculate, only prime numbers. So he inferred that the sequence only contained prime numbers. Now, before I start, I'd like to say that inference is normally done on real-world aspects, uh, not mathematical properties. Still, there are some examples of inferred mathematical assumptions known as conjectures. Conjectures. Sorry. Uh, English is not my strong suit. I will try to see how uh, statistical inference fares with this example, where it turns out that uh, the inference uh, indicates a false assumption. Before I start, uh, I think I will warn that I will not go through the um, statistical concepts in detail here. Rather, it can be seen as a demonstration of statistical reasoning. I'm thinking about doing a video series about reasoning and uncertainty based on statistics, uh, and then mostly Bayesian statistics. If I'll uh, do so, I will start at a much lower level and go through stuff that will seem pretty self-evident for most people. I hope to get to a level where the calculations here make sense though. However, before I do that, I need to know if there is um, any an interest for this. So send me a message saying this is interesting, uh, extremely boring, false, misguided, whatever. I need to know. It will be much better to know this in advance. Anyway, the Fermat numbers. Um, they are uh, 2 to the power of 2 to the power of n plus 1. And for n equals to 0, it's 3. For n equals to 1, it's 5. Next, 2, uh, 7, 3, 257, 4. 65,537 and that is how far as Fermat uh, managed and uh, all these uh, numbers are prime uh, so from that you could infer that um, this sequence is purely prime numbers and if he had managed to calculate uh, one more, he would have found that this is false. Uh, 2 to the power of 32 plus 1 is not a prime number. So, first I will uh, look at the frequentist uh, measure. Um, in frequentist statistics, you have only a probability for outcomes. Um, and you measure plausibility um, often by testing a zero hypothesis with a p-value, which is the probability of getting something as extreme as the result you got, given that the zero hypothesis is true. And what is extreme is defined by the alternate uh, hypothesis. And the problem is that the p-value is not a probability measure of the data directly. It's hard to interpret uh, what the number says. Usually a significance level is chosen so that the probability of rejecting a true zero hypothesis is less than the significance level. Usually this is 5%, but uh, you, can, uh, you can mix it a little. And uh, if it's uh, rejected with a significance level of 5%, you say that with 95% confidence, the zero hypothesis is re rejected. 
So uh, the main problem here is what is the zero hypothesis? There are two models. Um, model one, uh, f of n, uh, the uh, Fermat numbers, uh, are always prime. And um, the uh, second uh, hypothesis is that they are not always prime. So okay, M M1 uh, always prime as a zero hypothesis for n equals to zero, uh, you get a p-value of one, and so you get for all uh, n equal to one, two, three, and four, the probability of getting a prime when f of n is always prime is one. However, when f of 5 uh, comes, uh, it uh, yields a p-value of 0. So it's not an informative uh, measure, it just seems to support uh, the, uh, the zero hypothesis until it's uh, rejected. Um, so not a good thing. Uh, model 2 as a zero hypothesis, uh, then we need the probability of an arbitrary number being prime. However, prime numbers get more and more sparse the further out you go, so there's no fixed probability. Uh, we can instead look at the rate of prime uh, less than or equal to the number generated by the sequence. So uh, for n equal to uh, zero you get 100%. 1 you get 75%, 2 you get 43.8%, sorry for 2, uh, for 3 you get 21.5%, uh, for 4 you get 10%, and for 5 you get 4.73%. Uh, and um, now you get a p-value of uh, for n equal to 1 uh, up to 4. Uh, you get a p-value of 0.7%. Uh, uh, so model 2 is rejected with 95% and even 99% uh, confidence. Uh, which is rather disheartening, uh, but uh, such things will happen one with 1% 1 probability even if the zero hypothesis is true. Still it's it's a bit it's a bit much. Um, and the worst the zero hypothesis test for n equal to zero to five yields a probability of one point one percent so we still get a rejection even when the opposite uh, model has also been rejected if we have chosen that as a zero hypothesis. So, you see how these things are confusing, I hope. Uh, there are more sophisticated ways to do this uh, uh, using frequentistic um, uh, statistics, such as uh, the information criteria, but then you kind of get into the same thing as uh, Bayesian reasoning, so I will rather do that. So here's base formula. Uh, you can calculate the probability for a model uh, in this setting. You are not restricted uh, to only probability of data. Uh, everything uh, can be uh, given a probability, um, and it simply sums up, uh, sums up uh, how much you know uh, so far. And um, well, uh, it's given here. Uh, you have a probability of model given data as probability of data given model, which is the model specification, and the a priori uh, probability of uh, the model, and divided by a normalization factor. And uh, as you can see, you need a prior here, so that's a bit tricky. Uh, a probability that sums up how much you know before the data arrived. 